Some time ago, I gave a, a short talk to some of the world snooker coaches on the dangers of repetitive strain associated with this game, lovely game of snooker that we play. I highlighted the dangers. Maybe what I should have done, right, a little bit more of, was emphasize the remedial work that can be done to combat it. That I didn't do, and I was relying on other people to go out and search for that knowledge uh, in terms of the remedial work. But let me just say that when you play snooker, you are lifting your head into that position. You're lifting it, holding it, yeah, into that position. While he hits thousands, if not millions of balls. He will be developing the muscles at the back of the neck. So much so that they become shortened. And over a period of time, the delicate cervical vertebrae can be pulled out of slightly pulled out of position and later on in life give you problems. It is unnecessary to have these problems unless you develop some other thing like arthritis or whatever. Yeah, it's unnecessary to have these problems. Yeah, all you've got to do is approach it like a professional sportsman. Let's look at an athlete as an example. What does he do? He has a warm up. Then he does his activity. Then he has a warm down or a cool down. Yeah. Why are we any different? We're not. We're professional sportsmen if you're going to earn your living at this game. Yeah. So keep yourself fit. And fitness doesn't necessarily just mean uh, <laughs> anatomical fitness or aerobic fitness. It means both. Now a youngster playing this game, they, he's in his anatomical formative years is growing why not grow properly all right so one of the things i recommended was that kids should find a different activity as well not a, as a replacement as an add-on an additive yeah you do your practice or whatever but get out in the fresh air get on a bike right go for a run or a jog Best of all, go for a swim. Why swimming? Why swimming? Let's look at it. It's when you do, unless you're doing the side stroke, swimming is symmetrical movement all the time. The breaststroke, everything's uniform. You're doing the front crawl, everything is uniform. The backstroke, it's all uniform. You know, there's no one-sided activity. Yeah, if, if you look at... Um, the muscles involved here. If I want to bend my arm to bring my hand close to my face, I've got a prime mover, the bicep. I've got an antagonistic muscle, the tricep, that extends. So this is shortening, this one is lengthening. If I want to reverse that, the tricep becomes the prime mover and the bicep becomes the antagonistic muscle. Now we relate that to plain snooker, when we lift our head up here, this group of muscles here, they become the prime movers. But these muscles at the front and the internal muscle, they become the antagonistic muscles, but we don't stretch them out. Now, I'm not going to go through a load of exercises that involved in stretching them. There's no need. All you've got to do is have a look on YouTube. There are thousands of exercises that will help youngsters, all right? But what actually intrigued me is when I suggested uh, going for a swim, a well-known celebrity snooker player not only said I was negative, right? But he also said that swimming, the breaststroke, with the head out of the water is the same position as playing snooker. Now, if you think about it, that just is indicative of the, indicative of the, the naivety around, yeah? If you've got to have a, little, a smattering of knowledge about anatomy and physiology before you can make statements like that. It is a silly statement. 
if I can just dwell on somebody like Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan can play right-handed. He's stretching this side of the body. He can also play left-handed. Now he must practice left-handed, but don't you see he's twisting his spine that way and he's also twisting it that way. He goes for a run. He gets out in the fresh air. He keeps himself fit. That's why in one of, it's not the only reason, for God's sake, but it is one of the reasons that this man is the best player in the world. Because he, he does things properly. He's an athlete. He keeps himself fit. He's in his 40s now and still, in my opinion, the best player in the world. Now, if we look after ourselves and do things properly, you know, particularly when we're young, right, and make sure we mature in the right way. I'm not decrying this game of snooker. I love it. And I will encourage these youngsters to play snooker. But please, do it properly. Approach it like a professional attitude. Yeah, and then a professional way. And then your snooker career will last a lot longer. Good luck with that game.